Today on the audio hotline, I'm going to be reviewing the Neat Worker B. This is a condenser microphone that you can currently find online for about $89. If you've been around this channel for a little while, you might be like, hey, that microphone looks a little familiar. And that would make absolute sense. I did do a review a little while ago of the Neat King B. And yes, I did actually black the whole thing out. I know pretty sweet. <laughs> My custom paint job did turn out okay, but not amazing. <laughs> but essentially, the worker bee is the baby brother of the king bee. But we'll talk more about this microphone in a second. I'll tell you what comes with it, the features, the specs. We'll test it out. We'll do the whole damn thing. But first, let's get mic'd. <laughs> Welcome all audio nerds to the audio hotline, and as I said before, we have the neat Worker B in the studio. Now before I get started, I do want to just let you know I do have timestamps down below. If you want to navigate through this video to what you want to see, you can just go right ahead. But just know that I think you're a jerk if you don't watch it all. Now when I reviewed the King B, I will say I was a very big fan of that microphone. I thought that for the price, it was pretty much as good as you could get. So I have very high hopes for the Worker B, and I was really excited when I finally got my hands on it. But when it actually comes down to finding the King B now, it's like basically impossible. It's out of stock everywhere. Your only option is to buy it used. But right before I did the review for the Worker B, I will say it was in stock at a majority of places. It was definitely in stock at Sweetwater, and I actually bought it from Z Sounds, or Z Sounds, Z Sounds, I don't know. But here in a little bit, I will compare the King B to the Worker B. Now, like I said, this is an $89 microphone, but actually, when it originally came out, it was much more. And the same goes for the King Bee. When I bought the King Bee, it was about $120 to $130, I believe. But when it first came out, the King Bee was $350, and the Worker Bee was $200. That's like more than 50% off of both of these microphones. That's like wild. And it wasn't necessarily like a temporary sale. It just like dropped and stayed there. I don't know the reason why they dropped the price so significantly. I mean, maybe they were like, hey, we're already losing money on this. Let's just lose more money on this. <laughs> I'm sure they made a little bit of profit. But now that we've talked about the fun facts and gotten all of that out of the way, now let's go ahead and talk about what comes with the Neat Worker B. When you purchase the Worker Bee, you will get packaging very similar to the King Bee. This is by far the most amazingly branded, most amazing packaging that I've seen for any microphone. Neat really nailed the whole Bee theme. Now the accessories that are included with the Worker Bee are a dust cover, a pop filter that attaches to the front of the microphone just directly around the grill, a black and yellow, black and yellow shock mount. The shock mount has two screws at the bottom that attaches to the microphone. This also comes with two additional screws in case you lose them. This comes with a cute little tabletop toy thing, but it actually does have your serial number on the bottom of it. If you by chance live in the movie Inception, you can use it as your object to see if you're in the real world or not. This comes with adorably designed and themed documentation, of course. And it comes with the Worker Bee microphone itself. Now when it comes to the accessories, the packaging, just everything that's included with this, it's honestly amazing. Personally, I haven't seen another $89 microphone out there that comes with so many nice accessories. And even though it's extravagant and over the top, like the designer in me absolutely loves their packaging. Like when you receive this microphone in the mail, you like lift that box up and you're like, no, this couldn't be my microphone. Like this has got to be the dumbbells that I ordered, obviously. Curls for the girls. <laughs> but seriously though, the shock mount is awesome. Like, yeah, there's some plastic on it, but it still feels really good. The pop filter is great in the sense that it just, you know, attaches right to the front of the microphone, just right around the grill. There's just a perfect little notch for it. It's awesome. I will say the thing that might break the easiest in this package would be the pop filter, but it still feels good. This thing, I don't get it, but I love it. The build of the microphone itself is outstanding. It literally just feels like you got a saw out and you were just like, you know what? I just don't like this bottom part, you know? That's it. That's what you did. And then you got this, but it still worked somehow, even though you cut it in half. Build quality, accessories, everything just Love it. But speaking of build quality, something that's closely related, the look of the microphone. When I reviewed the King B, I basically said something along the lines of like, hey, this microphone might not be for everyone. 
if you care about what your microphone looks like. And in the comments, there were a lot of people that were like, oh, dude, like, who would care about what a microphone looks like? It's supposed to sound good. And then the other people were like, oh, this microphone looks so dumb. I'd never buy it. But one thing I will add, though, the more that I used the King B, the more I saw it, the less I cared. The more I was just like, it sounds nice. And that's what matters to me. Like, yeah, it's not my favorite looking microphone. Yes, it's very unorthodox, but it sounds great. And if this microphone packs a similar sound, I'll feel the same way about it. But when it comes to looks, it's your call. It was just commented on a lot back and forth. So I figured I should bring it up. But now that we've talked about what comes with this microphone, let's go ahead and nerd out and talk about some specs. The Neat Worker B has a permanently polarized 24 millimeter diameter condenser capsule. This has a cardioid polar pattern and a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. This has a sensitivity of 19 millivolts per pascal at 1 kilohertz, an output impedance of 50 ohms, a rated load impedance of 1000 ohms, a max SPL of 145 decibels, a signal to noise ratio of 79 dBA, a noise level of 9.5 dBA, a dynamic range of 135.5 decibels, and this does in fact require 48 volts of phantom power. Now I'll briefly put up the frequency response graph and the polar pattern graph so you can take a quick look at them. I will say the frequency response graph definitely has a very interesting look to it. And I don't just mean the black and yellow graph, I mean like the lows and the mids and the highs. <laughs> now when it comes to the specs, I will say for the price bracket that this is in, everything looks good. Like a 9.5 dBA noise floor level is actually pretty great for an $89 microphone. Considering the fact that the Audio-Technica AT2020 has like a 20 decibel noise floor level. One of the biggest differences between the Worker B and the King B is that the King B is actually a true condenser microphone, while the Worker B is an electric condenser microphone. Now, just because it's electric doesn't mean it's bad. There are some great sounding electric microphones out there. However, a lot of people do prefer true condenser microphones. To me, I just feel like if you like the sound of an electric microphone and you want to get that microphone and it works well for you, who cares if it's not a true condenser microphone? Well, now that we've talked about the basics, we talked about what comes with this microphone and we talked about the specs. Now let's go ahead and start testing this microphone out. Throughout this testing section, I will have it labeled what test I am doing down in the lower third if you want to pay attention to that. I will do tests with and without the provided pop filter, which will also be labeled down in the lower third. Now let's go ahead and kick this off with a proximity effect test. When you get really close to the Neat Worker B, here's how it's gonna sound. Now when you get really close to the Neat Worker B's pop filter, here's how it sounds. Now this next part's gonna get a little bit loud. We're gonna do some plosives. Peter Parker picked a patch of pickled peanutses. 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 Now if you're banging on some MX Cherry Blues directly behind this microphone, it's not going to sound great. It's going to pick up a lot of it. Here's how it's going to sound. Now to take this polar pattern test one step further, I'm going to go ahead and test it out with some white noise. If you talk into the front of the microphone, here's how it sounds. If you talk into the side of the microphone, here's how it sounds. Now, if you talk into the back of the microphone, here's how it sounds. Now, if you're going to use this microphone for a podcast or voiceover or anything where you're going to put some post-processing on it, here's how it could sound with a high-pass filter, a compressor, and maybe a couple other things. I'll label whatever I do down here in the lower third. My cat is biting my foot right now, and it hurts a lot. He's being kind of a dick. Now, if you want to get a little bit of distance between you and this microphone so you don't see it in your camera shot, here's how it sounds about three feet away. Now let's do a kitty purr test.
Now we're doing a real quick sound comparison between the worker bee and the king bee. Right now you are listening to the worker bee. It is going into the Mo2 M2, which is going into Logic Pro X, and it has no post-processing on it. Now you are listening to the neat king bee going into the Mo2 M2, plugging into my MacBook Pro, going into Logic Pro X. I have my peaks hitting negative 12 decibels, much like the worker bee, and here is how it sounds. Once again, you're listening to the worker bee, and I have my peaks hitting negative 12 decibels, and here is how it sounds. Once again, here is the sound of the neat king bee, the big, big bueno of the worker bee. And one last time, here is the sound of the neat worker bee going into the Mo2 M2. One last time, here is the sound of the king bee going into the Mo2 M2, and here is how it sounds. Now Blue and I are going to go back, edit some of this video, listen to all the tests, and come back and let you know how we feel about the Neat Worker B. Well now that I've been editing this video and listened to this microphone a lot, I think I'm finally ready to give you my review, my opinion, of the Neat Worker B microphone. I just feel like the green teal color just doesn't feel right for this video. And... Ah... Oh. That's better. So I was kind of curious what was going on with neat microphones, if they were planning on releasing more King B microphones for the same price, whether they were going to alter them or like what, whatever the deal was. I was just a little curious, so I did a little research. Turns out in January of 2021, Turtle Beach actually acquired neat microphones. I know that Turtle Beach is kind of like a gaming accessory company, but I do hope that Turtle Beach keeps the King B and the worker be, you know, going. I know that Neat does have the widget, and I actually reviewed one a while back, and that widget microphone is such a piece of shit. It was garbage, man. It was garbage. But hopefully they keep some things the same, like some XLR microphones and everything, and don't go totally USB. But yeah, just a real quick funnish fact. So when it comes to this microphone, I feel like there are a lot of really good things about it, and only a couple not so great things about it. But overall for $90, this microphone is pretty insane. The accessories that are included with this are great. The shock mount is awesome. The build quality is amazing. The pop filter does work pretty well. If you don't mind the way it looks, and I understand, looks are a controversial topic, okay? I get it. But if you don't mind the way it looks and you feel like it'll work well for your use case, then I would say absolutely get it. But with microphones like this and just microphones in general, you need to understand what microphone is right for you for your recording situation. If you're going to have a lot of background noise or you're in a really terrible sounding room, this probably isn't the best microphone for you. But honestly, this not having good background noise rejection, that's just kind of a, you know, a common thing for cardioid condenser microphones. But if you're a singer, a musician, a voiceover artist, or like a solo podcaster, I feel like this is a really good option. But when it comes to size, like this is so much easier to deal with than the gigantic King B. So I feel like a lot of people might even pick the Worker B over the King B just based off of size. Personally, I would take the King B over this microphone, but it's not like this microphone is a slouch at all. They are both fantastic for the price bracket they are in. And like I said earlier in the video, the price bracket that they are in now isn't the price bracket that they were in. Personally, I feel like the price bracket that they were in seems a little steep, but the price bracket that they are in now is extremely reasonable, and they are worth every penny. I really like the top end in this microphone, though. Like, it didn't sound harsh, and it just, I don't know, it just sounded clean. Of course, EQing to your particular voice, I would recommend it, but honestly, it sounds great, just right out the box. So the grade that I give the $89 Neat Worker B is an A. Plus, I got you so good. A plus. Yeah. Yeah. But like I said, I really like the sound of this microphone. I think the price is extremely reasonable for everything you get for it. And just overall, I highly recommend this microphone if you're looking for a condenser microphone around $100. Thank you all for watching this review of the Neat Worker B. I hope that it helped you out, helped you decide whether you want to get one of these or not. But most of all, I hope you had fun. Stay tuned for a lot more reviews, comparisons, and just a lot of other videos. Recently, I had a friend of mine say, dude, you should ask people to subscribe to your channel. And that's something I've never done. And um, no, no, I don't want to do it.
I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to ask. I mean, you've been made aware there is a subscribe button. It exists. And speaking of which, thank you very much to everyone that subscribes to the audio hotline. It really helps me out, helps me continue to do these reviews and get microphones and everything. You guys are awesome. And once again, thank you all for watching the audio hotline. I'll see you audio nerds next time.